From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. Good Monday morning. It's 5.30. Welcome to Montana This Morning. I'm Victoria Hill. Thank you so much for starting your day with us and the last week of 2020. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah, we're going right to glide into uh, 2021 not being able to see where we're going because <laughs> let's take a look at the first interstate I can. We've got really dense fog here around the Billings area right now. It's been down to around a quarter mile for um, going on like three, four hours now. It's been quite a while that the fog is really held in. So it's going to impact you a little bit here with your morning travel. 23 right now, but uh, we also have 92% relative humidity. That calm wind, an indication that this won't clear out super Super fast. It's going to stick around for just a little bit. Regionally, we're looking at anywhere from single digits. This morning at only one above in Butte for the coolest reading. Warland's only nine single digits around Kalispell, Cut Bank, where we also have reports of fog and Haver only in the teens. A lot of teens and 20s across the eastern plains for this morning, including Sheridan at 17. Only 12 for you in Livingston and Miles City. Good morning. You're at 20 degrees. Those areas of fog highlighted this morning here, especially around Yellowstone County, a little bit of the Bighorn County and uh, also for you uh, as we start looking around Treasure County. There's going to be other little pockets of fog as well. That's indicated in the areas in the light, lighter shaded regions this morning from Billings towards the east. Now as the morning goes on, that'll slowly start to back off so we could still see those little pockets of fog through about mid-morning. Temperatures into the teens and 20s here in southern Montana and northern Wyoming. A couple of colder exceptions, including White Sulphur Springs, only into the single digits this morning. So as we warm up in the afternoon, we'll catch some sun, a light breeze, and temperatures about average for this time of the year, 35 to 40 for a high. We'll talk about the rest of the week coming up in a couple of minutes. All right, and I don't know if it was the fog distracting me, but it didn't feel too cold outside. I, no, I don't know why. But that very light wind, I think, you know, and then there's a little more moisture around. So, right. yeah, it doesn't feel that cold, but certainly it's going to impact visibility. And then also, since we had some of that moisture around yesterday, some of that's refreezing. So you could all of a sudden come up on some slick spots, too. Oh, okay. Watch out for those. Yep. All right. Ed, thank you so much for that weather update. I'll uh, update everyone on the news now. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Our top story this Monday signed into law after criticizing the $900 billion COVID-19 relief bill. The president has put his signature on it. It releases millions of much needed funds into the economy. CBS's Deborah Alfaron tells us what it means for you. Relief is on the way for millions of Americans. After days of criticizing the coronavirus relief bill, President Trump finally signed it into law Sunday night. Congress had passed the $900 billion bill a week ago after months of negotiations. But the president threatened to veto it, calling the $600 stimulus checks a disgrace and asking for more than triple that amount. This support is unequivocally beneficial. Their citizens are getting the income support they need, and importantly, businesses are getting the loans and funding that they need so that they can keep people employed. In a statement, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi called the bill a down payment on what is needed to crush the virus. Both Speaker Pelosi and President Trump say the House will be voting today on providing $2,000 stimulus checks to many Americans. It's a measure many Republican lawmakers have resisted in the not so distant past. Why would we be sending $2,000 to people with a six figure income who've had no suspension, no reduction of their income at all? It should be targeted to people who've actually lost their job. Uh, small businesses that are actually in danger of going under. As the relief bill sat unsigned, millions of Americans lost their unemployment benefits over the weekend. Now those benefits will return, though delayed. Give me more food on the table. Help me pay bills. The president also signed off on $1.4 trillion in federal spending just one day before a potential government shutdown. Deborah Alfaron, CBS News, Washington. The economic package provides $600 in direct payments for adults, making up to $75,000 per year. It also includes lending for small businesses, direct rental assistance, education funding, and increased food stamps and child nutrition benefits. The bill also extends the moratorium on evictions for another month. And with the bill officially signed, it means the Montana Water Rights Protection Act 
is now law. As part of the new law, the Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribes in western Montana will take control of the National Bison Range. The tribe had been in a legal battle for more than 50 years trying to gain control of the range. Their opponents questioned their qualifications to manage the bison and other wildlife there, but CSKT officials say no one is more qualified than the original habitants of that land. This is such great news going into the holiday season and the new year. And I'm sure that the elders who participated in the negotiations over the past years are doing a victory dance in heaven right now. The National Bison Range is one of the most popular tourism spots in the state, and the tribe says it will remain open to the public. Leaders say they will work out details of the transition from the Fish and Wildlife Service in the coming weeks. And turning to the latest now on COVID-19, December is already the deadliest month of the entire pandemic, and experts fear it will only get worse. More than 64,000 Americans have died from the virus this month. But there has been some good news, and the CDC says nearly two million million coronavirus vaccine doses have been administered in the United States. Experts say everyone still needs to remain vigilant and continue to follow local health orders. Here in Montana, total confirmed cases since the pandemic began crossed the 80,000 mark yesterday. Right now in the state, there are over 6,000 active cases. 200 people are in Montana hospitals infected with COVID-19. Since March, the deaths of more than 960 people have been attributed to the virus. Over 70,000 have recovered. The European Union began vaccinating the first of its 450 million people across 27 nations. Here in the U.S., most people in rural areas are still waiting. CBS's Manuel Bajorquez has more. The rush of vaccines may soon start to trickle into places like Fort Atkinson, Wisconsin, which is tucked away from the big city traffic and noise, but also lacks what other large cities have, ultra-cold freezers needed to store Pfizer's COVID vaccine. Ann Lewandowski with the Southern Wisconsin Immunization Consortium is helping rural hospitals secure doses. Is daunting the right word? <laughs> yes. There will be communities that aren't going to see vaccine um, in these initial shipments. In fact, many states have chosen to reserve their limited supply of Pfizer's vaccine for more populated areas. So Moderna's vaccine, which does not require ultra cold storage, is considered a lifeline. Distribution delays could have deadly consequences. Nearly 15% of U.S. COVID deaths have occurred in rural areas. Health officials in Georgia, Michigan, and Texas are already sounding the alarm about getting vaccines outside of big cities. In the history of epidemics, rural communities, the epidemic tends to, to linger longer in the urban areas. Dr. James Martin is medical director at Fort Healthcare Hospital. Getting the doses is one problem, but so is vaccine hesitancy. A new survey says 35% of rural residents won't take the shot. Your biggest concern is what going into this rolling out of a vaccine? Convincing people to get the vaccine is my biggest concern and priority. All while the virus leaves no part of the country unscathed. Manuel Bajorquez, CBS News, Fort Atkinson, Wisconsin. And now here in Billings, police are investigating a shooting at a local bar. Early Sunday morning, a suspect fired multiple shots at Shooter's Bar and Casino at 1600 Avenue D. No one was injured. There's no word if police have someone in custody or what led to the shooting. Authorities now know the bomber behind the Christmas Day blast in downtown Nashville. He's identified as 63-year-old Anthony Warner. Investigators say they were able to match DNA samples from the blast scene with samples obtained from Warner's property. They say Warner died at the scene and they are still searching for a motive. The blast damaged dozens of businesses and injured at least three people. Yesterday, authorities shut down a highway 30 miles outside of Nashville because of a box truck that was playing a similar recorded message as the RV in the explosion. The truck driver was taken into custody and no explosives were found. Also making headlines this morning, the holiday season was somewhat friendly to businesses across the U.S. The latest numbers released this week and show sales went up 3% in 2020. That is lower than what the National Retail Federation predicted. It had expected sales to increase up to 5% from 2019. Online sales played a big role in the jump, rising 49% from 2019. Americans spent more on furnishings and food, but less on clothing and jewelry.
Despite the pandemic, many Americans decided to travel for the holidays. December 23rd marked the heaviest travel day since the pandemic began. TSA says it screened more than a million people the day after Christmas, but still it was roughly half the number of travelers compared to last year. TSA screening numbers also surged the weekend before Christmas. This all comes as experts warn of a post holiday surge in COVID-19 case numbers. And some people are returning to the movie theaters. The latest Wonder Woman film had the highest box office opening since the pandemic began, pulling in $16.7 million. The movie also released on HBO Max with the service saying around half of its viewers streamed it. There's also some good news for fans of the series. A third installment has gotten the green light. Well, college enrollment is suffering during this pandemic as many students struggle to cover the cost. Reporter Cesar Rodriguez shows us how hundreds of students across the country are now receiving help. Edwin Medina embodies what the Christmas spirit is all about. I feel very, I would say happy, excited. He just received $500. But this college student is not buying Christmas gifts for family or saving for a spring break trip. He's helping his mom. She doesn't have to decide whether she's going to put food or put a roof over her head for the month of December. Um, you know, we get to enjoy the holidays. Medina's mom was infected with COVID-19 in April and was out of a job for about a month. All the debt just piled on really quick. Um, $1,400 of rent became $3,000 of debt. Now she works several jobs to provide for her family. Although this undergrad student also works to help mom, it's not enough. The bills keep piling up. It's actually been really hard for her. It's just her taking multiple buses or trying to find a ride to get to work. Um, it's very stressful on her. Edwin was one of hundreds of students who received an emergency grant from the Aussie organization. The funds were raised from private donors and members to help struggling students. College is, is getting increasingly expensive, and um, with all of the, the challenges that happened within this past year, especially for our black and brown communities, um, the gap has widened. Edwin received the aid just days before the release of a report from the National Student Clearinghouse Research Center, which showed college enrollment fell more than 2% overall for fall of 2020. That's almost twice the decline from the previous fall. I'm happy that someone's able to hear my story and know the, the struggles that I'm facing. As for Edwin, he's grateful Asi allowed him to bring some joy to his mother this Christmas. She feels taken from me, it's taking away from what I'm working at, but I'm like, no, this is, this is what I'm doing this for you. I'm Cesar Rodriguez reporting. Thank you for starting your Monday with us here on Montana This Morning.